All right, here we're going to do an unboxing of the Race Logic V Box Sport. Um, this is the V Box that it can be used with your phone to give you real time data on the phone. It uses a 20 hertz GPS, which is supposed to be the best. Um, I had planned on initially going with a uh, performance box because it has a little display, but uh, uh, this one was slightly cheaper. This was 400 plus 50 for the mount, which I haven't received the mount yet, by the way. Uh, but it's 400 plus 50 for the mount, and this one's supposed to be a little bit uh, more accurate, so it gives you better data. And um, these are very accurate. I'm going to be testing it at the track as well, but they're, they usually give within a hundredth or, or even a thousandth, thousandths of what the car is actually running. So these are, are not toys. It's not like the old g -Techs that people used to get for a hundred bucks. This is an actual race logic, real um, performance monitor that uses GPS, a very accurate GPS to determine um, performance. And it can log things such as quarter mile, 60 foot, um, speed to speed, so you know 50 to 120 or 0 to 120, like anything you your heart desires, and also braking. So let's get it open here and see what it comes with. Now, um, I've seen people run these without the mount, like just like tape it to the dash or something like that. I might try to do that. I'm trying to figure out when exactly my mount is going to get here. So if, uh, if it comes down to it, I'll, I'll, I'll do the same. I'll find some way to jerry-rig uh, something to make it work. So this is what it comes with. This is the V-Box board. It's actually pretty small. Um, seeing it online doesn't really give you a good scale for the, for the size. So it is waterproof as well, because um, I know they can be used on bicycles, motorcycles, all that sort of things. Um, anything where you want to log performance data. And this is what else it comes with. So it looks like it comes with a USB power adapter that plugs into the cigarette lighter. So this is just a, a little um, a standard. Let's see if I can get that there. Mm, can't really focus on it, but this is just a normal micro USB. So it's the same thing that your uh, Android phones would use or anything else, so there's nothing special about the, the cord. It's a decent length, but you can easily get one of those on Amazon or eBay for, for almost nothing. And this is the, the portion that will screw onto the back of this and work with the mount, which I don't have yet. So the reason why it doesn't come with the mount is because there's different ways of mounting it. You can mount it, you can do a roll bar mount, you can do a, like a remote type mount because it does have a remote antenna input for a remote GPS antenna. So there's a few different options on how you can utilize it with your, your vehicle or whatever thing you're trying to measure. So here it is. I'm gonna probably, uh, eh, instructions, I'm not gonna look at those. I'm just gonna hook it up to my phone and start going. So be back in a second. All right, I just so happened to already have a, a cable so I'm just this is a uh, proves that it just will work with a normal um, mini USB or micro USB or whatever that is the normal uh, newer style Android connector so the ports you have you have the antenna so I can look on it you have the antenna for external antenna you have the USB for power and probably for hooking it up to a computer and such and you also have a, a SD a full size SD card and it comes with, uh, let me see what size it is, 4 gig. So since it's just recording data, it's, it's probably, the 4 gig is probably more than enough. So we'll uh, pop that in. And it does have these big rubber things that go on it to make it waterproof. I'm going to assume to sync it with Bluetooth, you hold down one of these buttons. Oh, no, let me see if I can get that zoomed in. Okay, got that zoomed in decently or focused decently. Um, so it's got 
a bunch of blinky lights. I think this the first one is power. The second one is GPS. Um, third one is Bluetooth. And the last one is SD card, which probably means it's writing to the SD card. And then you have this button, which is probably how you start the run or the mapping or whatever you're doing. So, um, assuming that this means I can sync it with the phone. So let me get that. And okay, there's V Sport, v, VB Sport. It's just a device that you can sync on your phone. I'm clicking on it to pair it. And it's connected. So, let's see if I can get that. VB Sport connected. So now we're hooked up to it. Okay, I'm assuming you know you got GPS sync when the light is solid. But I'm not actually going to take it out at the moment. I'm going to do that probably tomorrow because I'll need a little bit more time and it's it's fairly late. So I just wanted to get this thing unboxed. So I'm going to just show a little bit about what the app can do. And you can download this app um, just through the App Store. And it has like a, a, a test portion. So you don't even actually need the device to kind of play with it and see what it does. So like right now it's in demo mode because I actually downloaded it before I even had the, the device. So you can see demo modes here. We're going to turn off demo mode because I actually have one now. And uh, so this is what you got. You got uh, speed units. This is just in the settings. Distance unit. Um, sp speed display filter, which I have no idea what that is. Uh, oh, it affects the displayed speed. So um, one thing to keep in mind that you can use this, this uh, app to kind of look at your data in real time. But this isn't really... It, gives you data but it records it on the SD card and from there you could actually access more accurate data and and uh, so you don't need to use a phone at all it just gives you a, a, a the ability to look at the the data in real time so if you do a run you can see ac exactly what it was immediately without having to hook up your computer and all that all that nonsense cool. and then of course the one foot rollout you have to make sure that's checked that can be a, a controversial topic, but all drag strips use that. So if you're testing 60 foot, um, 0 to 60, I'm pretty sure 0 to 60 uses it when uh, magazines and such test it. So if you're, you're testing anything that you want to compare with another result, like track times, you need to have the one foot rollout because that's just a standard. Whether or not you agree with it, you can't compare numbers if you are using a different method. So let's go to the setup now. Oh, so it did say no GPS, so I'm in my garage. And um, so it's got to probably have a, a better GPS signal than what we have just sitting here. Um, so there's different different modes you can use. Um, there's acceleration, brake, and zero to zero. So zero to zero would be like zero to 100 to zero. So you can test your, your um, braking and acceleration. I know the people do that with uh, a lot of supercars and high performance cars I won't be doing anything like that um, and then from there you can customize the test uh, we're gonna look at acceleration just to show what sort of things we can do so there's there's distance measurements and you can add any of these any of these so you can do distance so 0 to 60 feet and of course the, the distance measurement would be a quarter mile so you can start at 0 feet and end at of course 1320 or you can do one mile you can do you can do it all and it's going to be provide you very accurate data and also speed measurements so this is the one i'm mostly interested in um probably zero to 60 runs and what i'm really looking for is a, a way to to kind of make a run without having to um, shift so probably just leave it in in third gear and start at 3500 or so and then just go from whatever speed to whatever speed and that way or whatever speed to red line that way I can compare different mods and it'll be kind of like a dyno pole because if I'm shifting then I can shift differently and you're adding a variable in and you're not going to get reliable data with uh, anytime you're adding a, a, a variable of a, a human who's shift rowing the gears um, you could still get accurate data doing that. You just have to do far more runs in order to make sure you're you're uh, you're not being 
uh, you're not changing anything between runs. So, um, so that's it. Uh, you can add all these different things, uh, different methods of testing, 0 to 60, 30 to 70, 50 to 70. Those are just examples, but you can do pretty much anything. Um, for example, I imagine something what I would be doing would be more like 30 to, I don't know what the end of third year goes to, 100 maybe? I don't know. Um, so 30 to 100, you can do that and add it in. So new test range added. So now it's going to do 30 to 100. Um, 30 to 100 is right there in there. So now when you start this and do the do the run, that's one of the, the um, waypoints it's going to measure. So I think when you and when I actually start testing, I'll tell you exactly how it how you use it in in the in the real world when you're actually driving. I assume you press the play button or something like that, and then it, it tells you you know it's time to do your run, and then it just kind of starts off when you hit the speed. But I'll I'll make sure it's accurate because I'm going to be testing different products, and I want to make sure that I'm I'm providing real accurate data. So this is it. This is the the V Box Sport by Race Logic. This is about four hundred dollars. I'll post a link to it just in case anyone's interested. But I've seen tests, and you can look up online. There's a, a few tests that people have done at the at, at tracks. I mean, with this device side by side at the track, and it's within a few hundreds or within a few thousands. So it's very very accurate. Uh, you're not talking about something that gives you a ballpark. It gives you an exact time. I mean, it's it's just as good as the track essentially. Um, one thing you do have to, to factor in though is, is you have to make sure you're you're testing in uh, in an environment that makes sense. So you could you could do this. You could do I could do a quarter mile downhill, and of course it's going to be super fast. Or I can do a quarter, quarter mile uphill, and it's going to be slow. So keep that in mind that if you want to actually have the best data, you got to make sure it's perfectly flat, like they do at tracks most of the time. Sometimes tracks have slopes that add to inaccuracy, but um, yeah, that's uh, basically it. And um, possibly with the uh, braking test, I can you know change pads and change different braking items, and uh, maybe go with the big brake kit, and then see how it actually performs in, in the real world. Do some back-to-back -back runs and see how the fade from stock versus um, the device works, so. All right, thanks for watching.